All right. If um, if we have another board member that is a co-host, if you could uh, take care of the uh, weight room, allowing people in, that would be great. Um, again, welcome everyone to the 2023 SFYBL baseball q and um, although we're still in 2022. Um, a couple housekeeping um, items. If you are in, um, if, if you're in the Zoom, if you could please put yourself on mute, uh, that would be great unless um, called upon or unless you have a question, then unmute yourself, but it's, it's hard to hear um, when you are, uh, when we talk over someone that's not muted. Um, we are going to have a, PowerPoint presentation for you. Um, it's going to be a bunch of slides. We're going to try to get through this as painless as possible. Um, important this year um, and new this year is that we have a new software that we're working with. Um, last year, we were using a, a program called SI Play. We are no longer using SI Play. We're using a new um, app called uh, League Apps. Uh, League Apps have, they have several uh, additional features that SI Play did not have. Um, they have the ability to do a lot uh, more than what our program last year um, had as far as ability to do. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, Brent is going to walk us through um, that process in registering a team. Most of you that are here um, this evening um, are we're under the assumption that you are going to be coaching this year or thinking about registering a team um, and you're wanting to gather more information on how to do this. Um, after you register a team, you will have the ability ability to invite players to join your team um, or a link could be sent out to to that to that player um, or potential player that you want on your team. These players would register for this team that you created. Um, you would have until um, the first week of December to get at least 10 players on this team um, to make it an official team. If you do not have 10 players by that first week of December, um, we will be giving you either uh, contacting you by email or a phone, um, letting you know that, hey, your team is on the verge of being deactivated because you don't have enough players for your team if you're under 10 players. Um, and then we would work with you on getting additional players if you needed. Um, we have the ability to ask other teams that may be short players um, to combine with um, other teams that may be short um, to make a full team, so on and so forth. So it's not like we're just gonna kick you out of the system and you won't have the ability to participate, but because we see this um, year after year, um, teams trying to get enough players to be an official team and not having enough players um, we know that these challenges will arise or, or come up and that we are here to help you get more players. Um, I know a lot of you may be just, again, thinking about this. You might have six or seven players, not quite enough for a team. Um, so, again, that's what we're having this uh, meeting for is just so we can get a better idea of how we can all work together together to um, make your season happen. Um, without further ado, I'm going to pass this on to Brent. Um, Brent will um, stop, start the PowerPoint. And again, we'll go through the slides um, with, with the idea. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please put these questions in the chat. We will take note of all the questions you're asking. And periodically, we will maybe stop for it um, to answer some of these questions or save the question answering for the end. Um, and then again, at the end, if you have any additional questions, because these questions are going to be coming up as you're um, seeing these PowerPoint presentations, um, please just write them down and then, or when you have a chance, put them in the chat and then we'll, we'll by all means get through every single question that is in that chat and answer those questions to the best of our ability. Um, again, without further ado, I'm going to pass this on to Brent. Brent? Thanks, Gerald. Uh, welcome everybody to the 2022 Coaches Managers meeting. The target audience for this meeting are people as Gerald just said, who are going to be creating teams, uh, either as the team manager or the head coach. Um, it's not just for, it's really not targeted for just like, oh, I have a kid that wants to play in the SFYBL, uh, just to make that clear off the top. Um, SFYBL is an all-volunteer organization. We're a partnership between uh, the San Francisco Rec and Park Department and the San Francisco Fire Department flame youth program 
Um, uh, Donnie Bendo is our executive uh, in charge of that. He's from the San Francisco Fire Department. And then we have on our executive board, three members from the Parks Department, Leonard Barnard, Jimmy Chin, and Gerald Reeder, who you just heard. Uh, we also have uh, further board members and advisory support from some uh, Rec and Park personnel, Manny Blackwell, Nathan Birnbaum, and Victor Reed. And uh, then the rest of division commissioners, including myself for the Mustang Commission, we have Aaron McClure, Allison Rupp, they do Shetland together, uh, even though it's uh, so they both do Shetland T-ball. They both do Shetland coach pitch. So uh, it's just not room on the slide to make that a slash mark, but know that you can reach out to either one of them. Uh, all the division commissioners can be reached just through the division name at sfybl.com. So if you send a message to Shetland, it'll go to both Aaron and Allison. So, so Brett, uh, yes. real quick, sorry to interrupt you. We're not seeing the slide on um, the screen. So just okay. a heads up on that. All right. What do you see? I'm seeing myself and a bunch of other participants. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but. Um, okay, hold on. Maybe I uh, did not. Yep, no slideshow. Oh, there it goes. All right. Ah, well. Yep, you're live. Well, you didn't miss much in the slides, folks. Just the heads. <laughs> we'll just keep going, though. Um, and these are the other divisioners, Scott McDonald's and Pinto, myself and Mustang, Donnie Bendo and Bronco, and Melissa anderson Hen doing Pony. Uh, she also does our social media, which we'll get to in a bit. Here's the agenda for today's meeting. Going to go over some important dates. Uh, briefly look at our code of ethics the player fees for this year, uh, how to participate, how to register teams, uh, how to register coaches and volunteers, and how to register players. All of those are different, as Gerald has mentioned, as they, than they have been in the past because uh, the system we were using uh, uh, got to its end of life, so we had to find a new one. Uh, practice fields and buys, volunteer opportunities, uniforms, an overview of the rules and any new rules that we have this year. Uh, a quick look at the mandatory protocols, such as the concussion protocol, the abuse awareness protocols that everyone loves being tested on every year, uh, how we handle rainouts, our youth umpires, uh, the Bay Sox girls baseball program, which we're very proud of. That's uh, we've had for quite a few years now. And new this year, we're going to be introducing girls softball. Uh, and seeing how we can uh, make it go at that. Uh, we'll talk about the All-Stars, talk about our social media, the virtual badge uh, program that we introduced last year, and then uh, walk through uh, the team creation process. And uh, but we are not doing breakout sessions at the end. We're just going to have a Q&A. So here's the calendar. For 2023, most of these dates are pretty firm, but as always, as it says on the website, the dates can change. So um, always be checking in on the website. And, and there also will be a new website this year. We'll talk about that as well. Um, uh, obviously, the year is kicking off with this meeting. Uh, and after this meeting, registration will be open tonight. Uh, you will be able to start uh, registering your teams. Uh, and then also... As Gerald mentioned, what's one of the major differences this year is that rather than players and coaches then having to log into the system and find their team and put themselves on their teams, this year under the new system, it will all be done uh, by invites. The uh, team creator, either the head coach or the team manager, will use the system to send invita email invitations to everybody. Uh, on the team. And then when they get that invite, uh, there's just a, a, a button on it to click and it will, takes you directly to your team so that you sign up only onto your team. And they're, you know, we've had problems in the past where people are, well, which Red Sox am I on? Is it the, is it the Roosevelt Red Sox or the, the George Peabody Red Sox? You know, uh, and this will eliminate any of that. 
Um, so registration, like I said, will open tonight. Registration for Rec and Park, who also have teams uh, for people who don't have their own teams or individual players who want to join the league, they can sign up through Rec and Park teams. That registration is going to open in a couple weeks. Um, and then all the team independent team registration will close on December 7th at noon uh, so that we can see where everybody's standing. Uh, and then, as Gerald mentioned, all the teams that have less than 10 players uh, will have to try to figure out uh, whether uh, other, whether that team will fold and we have to find other teams for those players or whether we can uh, find players for those teams. We do let people sign up on a wait list uh, once the Rec and Park teams all fill up. Um, and then uh, we do our best to match people uh, players to teams and uh, and hopefully let everybody play is always the goal. Um, then uh, later in December, the spottery system will take off. That's the uh, San Francisco Rec and Park system used to uh, set up practice times and uh, practice fields. Um, we'll talk about that a little later. Um, online uniform ordering will be much later in December. Um, then early in January will be the actual draft for the for the spottery. We'll cover that. Um, buys and special requests will be due in January. Uh, the coaches clinic, which uh, we very much encourage people, to, uh, all the coaches to attend. Uh, not just the new coaches, but um, everybody. There's always there's always good stuff you can learn at these clinics. When I coached, I I used to love going to the coaches clinic because I always learned some good tips from Manny or Vic. Um, and now uh, I'm doing my best to give out some good ones. So very much uh, worthwhile going to. Um, fingerprint window is going to close on February 11th this year. We'll talk about that later. Fingerprinting will be a little different this year and on a tighter schedule. Um, Umpire's Clinic, opening day, February 25th. And that will, like uh, the previous years, that'll be the day we also give out the game balls. Um, the practices will begin at the end of February and the season will start up at the beginning of March with the upper division on the first weekend and the lower division on the second weekend. April 1st is the last day to add players. Um, and then, uh, anyway, I'm not gonna go through the rest of the calendar. This is online, of course, and as we get deeper into the year, uh, you can read all that yourselves. Okay. Our code of ethics, and again, our, these are posted on the website. These aren't just perfunctory, you really need to go over these, really get in the headspace of what we expect out of you as coaches. Um, you're working with children, you're role models, you need to take it seriously. It's a serious and important position in your life and a rewarding one. And if you follow these guidelines, it'll be even more rewarding. Um, but again, I say we won't, not going to go through these one by one tonight, but uh, do want you guys to all check it out. All right, this year player fee went up slightly, very little, ninety-eight dollars for the lower division, Shetland and Pinto. That includes your cap and jersey and an undershirt and socks. Uh, then it's up to uh, the teams to to or for the families to get their own pants and everyone should uh, have matching pants. If you're gonna wear black, everyone should be wearing black. If you're gonna wear gray, et cetera. They don't have to be the same brand or anything like that. Really just mainly the color so that you guys look like a team, got your team uniform on. Mustang Bronco Pony, same price to register for $98, but that does not include the uniforms at that level. Um, teams have to buy their own. Uh, you may and are encouraged to use our vendor and the information on how to do that will be provided by us later on in December. Um, you don't have to use our vendor. Um, and then the only guideline there is if you do get your uniforms from somewhere else, uh, you have to order 
from us an SFYBL patch, but there's no that cost for that patch is included in the $98. So uh, you just have to let us know and we will get those patches to you and they can be sewn on or they can be ironed on. Okay, how to participate. Uh, if you're a new coach this year, um, all new coaches, assistant coaches, anyone in physical contact with kids on the field at practices or games, you are required to be fingerprinted uh, through the San Francisco Rec and Park Department, and they get that cleared by DOJ. And this is an absolute requirement in order to, to work with children. And that's what you're doing when you're coaching. Um, so, you know, if you're just the scorekeeper or someone who's uh, a parent who's bringing some cookies into the dugout or something, you don't have to be fingerprinted. Only the coaches who are working. But if you're a coach who's at, you know, like, oh, well, I'm not at the, any of the games. I just help out at practices. You have to be fingerprinted. You have to be cleared by the department. And you may have been fingerprinted through some other organization like CYO or the Parish League, but in order to coach in SFYBL, you must be fingerprinted by SF Rec and Park. Um, as part of that process, you'll have to show a copy of your vaccine card or the QR code that's issued by the state uh, that shows that uh, when you turn in your application to Rec and Park to, to be a volunteer. It's a two-step process. You'll complete the Rec and Park volunteer application online at our website. This is where you'll find that. Uh, you print it out uh, and, uh, or, you know, or print it out or it, however you want to do it. Email a copy of that completed form to volunteering at sfybl.com. Then you have to get fingerprinted, as I just lengthily went through, by San Francisco Rec and Parks. Uh, you bring a copy of that volunteer application and a valid, not expired picture ID, either your California driver's license or just a California ID or a passport. And as I mentioned, the proof of COVID vaccination. And you're going to take that down to the Millwright's Cottage which is the little cottage right next to the windmill uh, in the southwest corner of Golden Gate Park, right? Right at Lincoln Boulevard and the Great Highway. There's a little building there and that's where there's an office. That's where the fingerprint machine is. Um, so again, that's for all new coaches, anyone who hasn't gone through this process before. Uh, because the good news this year is, is anyone who's been fingerprinted in the past is, uh, doesn't have to repeat the process. Uh, anyone with fingerprints on file from San Francisco Rec and Park is now good to coach in SFYBL uh, forever. Um, and that's, but that's a big change this year and that's good. So that's why I keep saying that this only applies to new coaches. You're the only ones that are gonna be getting your fingerprints done this year, but this will be the only time you ever have to do it. Uh, but a little different this year too. There's a, uh, the fingerprinting will be done. You don't have to make an appointment, but you can only go during these times, um, which is currently now started a couple of days ago through November 19th, Wednesdays and Fridays, 10 to one Saturdays, 11 to three. Uh, and then they'll be closed for a while. And then they will reopen for about a month, January 13th, through February 11th, uh, and only Fridays and Saturdays at that time, 10 to three. So as always, I always stress the sooner the better. There's always this crush and gnashing of teeth at the end. Uh, and obviously when everyone waits for the end, then you're gonna go down there and you're gonna be waiting in a really, really, really long line of people. Why do they get fingerprinted? So do yourself a favor, go tomorrow, you know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, go tomorrow, 10 a.m., get down there, get it done. It doesn't take very long. The process itself, maybe 15 minutes. But um, 
you know, if there's a line, you're going to wait in the line. But they they have also said that anyone who's in line by the cutoff time, they will see that day. Uh, but you know, if you show up at one ten, if if there's no line or if there is a line, they're not going to see you. They're, you're not going to be able to get in. And like I said, returning coaches, your fingerprints are good for your entire SFYBL tenure. Yay! Um, and so go to the website and under the uh, coaches tab, you'll find, no, I'm sorry, on, yeah, under the coaches tab and then on the how to volunteer tab, there is that link to the, to the spreadsheet that has everybody. If you're on that spreadsheet, you're good to go. If you're not, let us know. And you think you should be, um, uh, send in an email to your division person and uh, we'll try to figure out what's going on with that. All right, team self-assessment. This is a very, very important process. Uh, doesn't apply to Shetland, just for Pinto, Mustang, Bronco, and Pony. We try to put everybody uh, so that they're playing kids with similar skill sets, right? So, and it varies a ton, obviously, especially the older you get. So we have a bronze level, a silver level, a gold level, and a platinum level. And when you go in later, when we show you the process, to, when you go in to create your team, one of the, the first thing it's going to ask you is what's your team name? And then it's going to ask you what level do you want to be at? So you want to do that before you go in, right? You're going to, you want to already know, yes, I'm going to do this. And it's uh Again, and this is on the web. When you go to our website, there's a drop down tab for that, and it lays out all all the you know pony, bronco, mustang, pinto, all four. You know what is a platinum team? What is a gold team? Uh, all the different levels that guidelines that we have for that, and and it can be hard sometimes. Not you know nobody matches each description, but. Uh, it should get you thinking at around, you know, like how many good pitchers do I have and how many they, you know, there's certain things like, are, are you one of the teams that only practices the one day a week we give you a permit or do you have your, do you practice other times? And if you do, then that puts you up a level, for example. Um, but what we also stress is you should always reach a little high, right? Don't sandbag. Don't say, oh yeah, I know we're the worst. We're the worst team in the world. You know, we're just a bronze team. And, uh, you know, if you know you're better than that, you know, play silver, you know, even if you think you are bronze, you might want to play silver. It's really, you know, nobody wants to go out and lose every game and you're not going to, you know, but it's okay to lose half your games. You know, not everybody can win all their games. And if you're winning all your games, you're probably in the wrong division. You know, that's a good guideline, too. Um, you want to challenge your kids. You learn a lot more from your losses than you do from your wins. Um, okay, so if you're a new independent team, you will find specific instructions, step-by-step -step instructions on the website under the sign up info tab. Um, so like I just said, review the self-assessment guide before you create your team. You can start uh, tonight after this meeting. Uh, you're gonna set you're gonna set yourself up and your team in, in effect, you're gonna do it at the same time. So uh, the slide is already slightly stale. And that process will be open from tonight until December 7th. And then that's when we'll close it for a little while. And no new teams can be made after December 7th. Uh, but but people, you'll still be able to add coaches and add um, players after that time. In fact, you can add uh, them all the way up to April 1st. Um, but you still need that initial 10 from the beginning. Um, and then this year, of course, Returning independent teams, there's the exact same instructions because it's a brand new system. So I won't read them all again. I just, um, it was the same slide. We're just kind of uh, 
underscoring that. It's going to be a new process for everybody this year, including us. And I think Gerald mentioned that too. I mean, we're we're just getting this system up. Um, I think we're pretty ready, but it could, you know, as with any new system, there might be some bumps in the road. So please be patient with us. And if you're in the middle of a process and you just can't uh, get something uh, you know, you get stuck on a spot, just reach out to your commissioner and we'll get you through um, one way or the other. Uh, okay, and naming your team. This is a thing um, we had this last year and not everybody adhered to it this year. Uh, we may just go in and change the name of your team if you don't follow this convention. So please follow the convention. Um, and even though with this new system, we are eliminating some of the confusion by uh, allowing uh, coaches to just invite players and coaches to sign up. Therefore, they don't have to go looking for your team. There's still reports that have to be run. All kinds of things are done. And it gets really confusing when there's, you know, five different jackrabbits and wolves. I think wolves are probably the most common team name in SIYPL, there's wolves and wolf packs and pack wolves and pack rats and I don't know what all, but the idea this year, so have your team name, the head coach's last name, and your school name. And school name's optional, but that does add clarification. So the example here, Orcas, Llewellyn, GPS, because when I, that was my team, it was George Peabody School. And so if you can make the school, if you want to use the school name, that's great. And if it's a long school name, an abbreviation would be great too. But it's just, it's good to have clarity between all these different teams. All right. Where are we going to practice? Um, and again, uh, as you'll see a theme in our slideshow every year in order to make this process go quickly, is that everything, all these instructions are found on our website. But we did, we do want to do this kind of run, uh, once over, but the very specific instructions are found there. Spottery system, as I mentioned earlier, it's a rec and park system. They use it for drafting your practice day, time, and field. Um, so on December 14th or abouts, an email will be sent from SF Rec and Park. It doesn't come from SFYBL. It comes from RPD. And it will be sent to the person who created the team. And this is key uh, to remember that fact. But that instructional email, part of uh, what you're doing with that is you're setting up where all the subsequent emails concerning the draft will be sent. So you might be the team manager who, who created the team in the system, but now you're like, well, the head coach does everything. I don't run anything. And that's okay because when you get that first email uh, for the spottery draft, you have an opportunity there to say, okay, please send everything else from now on to this person. Um, short of that, and, but you should also, if, if you've gotten that email, go ahead and send this email to, the, to who whoever on your team is the correct person to be getting it. Okay. Buys and special requests. And again, the specific instructions will be found on the website. Your drafter will receive the person again, who we talked about in the first, whoever you nominated as your drafter after that initial email from the Rec and Parks will now be on our and will be viewed as your drafter. And they will also receive this email uh, about buys. A buy day is, is a day that you know ahead of time that your team won't be able to play. Typically you use this for spring break, right? You know you're a public school and when spring break, it's like, well, everyone's going to be gone. So I don't want any games, you know, during that week and on one of those weekends. Can't do both because you only get two. I'm speaking about the upper division. Lower division teams, Shetland and Pinto, you guys get as many buys as you want. 
what with the knowledge, or let me give you the knowledge that if if you take you know five buys, that's five less games you're going to play. Um, and it's in the upper division, everybody gets one Saturday and one weeknight buy. You will st- you will still because we you know we keep track of scores and we're keeping track of who's of of of, of the standings. You know everyone needs to play hopefully the same amount of games. So everybody gets a buy um, or two buys, the weekday buy, weeknight buy, and a Saturday buy. Um, and that doesn't affect the number of games you'll play. Um, you can also make special requests. They're not guaranteed. A special request is, you know, oh, can all my games be, can all my Saturday games be in the morning? You know, because sometimes it's just a real burden for whoever's coaching to, they're just not able at all to coach in the afternoon. Again, we can't guarantee that, but we do allow people to make those requests. And then when we build the schedule, we do our best to accommodate those special requests. Um, And those are made at the same time you make these buys and you'll you'll, you'll get a form to to fill out for that. Um, So again, lower division, you get as many buys as you want. You don't need to make special requests because your games uh, are only on Saturdays. Uh, Although you can make, Pinto can make special requests, I guess they're, well, no, they're only on Saturdays too. So, We'll stick with the buys on that. So, and then I just would highlight this year for everyone to know again, the buys are usually centered around spring break. So these are the dates in uh, 2023. The public school spring break will be March 27th through the 31st. And the parish schools are April 7th through the 14th. So start thinking about that now. Um, a lot of coaches don't think about that. Then spring break rolls around and they're just kind of call, you know, emailing their commissioner like, oh, I'm not going to have enough players this week. And that will then lead to a forfeit, which we'll get to in a second. And you don't want to have any forfeits um, uh, because the penalty is rather stiff. Um, SFYBO volunteer opportunities. Again, again, another tab on our website. Um, and these, I mean, and we all we are always looking for new board members, but we also want to stress that you don't have to be a board member to help out with SFYBO. Um, you can write in and say, I'd like to be a friend of the board. And there's someone who just says, hey, I'm available if ever some kind of errand comes up or whatever. And then we can reach out to you and say, hey, we need someone to uh, shuttle this box of balls over this team on the other side of town that didn't make it to ball day. Something like that. Uh, Another opportunity is to actually help give out baseballs on distribution day and opening day or helping out in general at opening day, helping out. Uh, the player recognition games um, for uh, handing out the shirts to the kids or stuff. There's just, there's always a lot of work. We are an all volunteer board and we get stretched really thin sometimes guys. It's enough that, you know, we have the weekly board meetings and we're doing uh, the commission. We're the commissioners. So, but also having to then, like I say, run baseballs all over town or pick up, pick up things here and there. Uh, any help we can get is very much appreciated. So information, where's the calendar? Where do I get it? It's all at the website, um, which hope so right now as part of our new system, we also have a new backend for our website. So if you go to www.sfybl.com today, it will go to our old website, which I've really working hard to keeping it just as up to date as the new one. Um, But very quickly, perhaps as soon as uh, next week, when you go to www.sfybl.com, you will go to the the correct, quote unquote, correct website. But again, 
they're very similar. All the same information should be found at either place. And again, if you can't find what you need, just reach out to your commissioner and we'll get you uh, hooked up uh, with the info. All right, moving on. Uh, rules overview. Uh, the age standards, bases, bats, balls, pitching, how to report your scores and pitch counts, forfeits, and new rules. So here, if you want to take a screenshot of this screen, I'll leave it up for a second. But again, this is also all available on the website. But these are the age uh, ages for this year. And it's a, a, a big, it's not that big a change, but a fairly big change this year is that Pony changed the cutoff date. You might remember that for the last four or five years, the cutoff date was always August 31st. Uh, they had changed it to line up with Little League. Um, no one ever really liked that. I guess they finally decided uh, there was no need for us to do that. Little League does it just be, be, because they, they do that World Series in the summer and that's televised and there were a lot of reasons they had to do that. So Pony decided this year to move the cutoff dates back to what it used to be, which is running from May 1st to April 30th. So now your baseball age is however old, uh, however old you are on April 30th or May 1st, e either one. Um, um, and for this year, if, if it should cause some hardship to anyone who, well, last year I would have been considered eight now i'm only considered seven uh or any other year and that you reach out to commissioner the pony rule this year is that an, an accommodation will be made uh this year that you know that these are the new age standards for this year but were uh last year's can be applied if necessary uh but really in most circumstances this is actually uh, a benefit uh, but as always, anytime you change these age groups, somebody falls into a hole that gets created by it. But we will work with you. There shouldn't be any 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 issues with this. Um, and again, this is just the same thing in a different format. This is a nice grid. Ponies always had a grid like this, and now we have one specific to SFYBL. Um, and the one thing I like about it is over on the right. It very clearly shows you which division you can play in or play up in. So if I'm seven, um, I can play uh, in, or uh, if I'm, is that right? Sorry, now I might have to double check that. I'm going to pick eight then. If I'm eight years old, I can play in Pinto, right? I can also play up to Mustang if I'm an exceptionally good kid. Um, you know, that, that is allowed. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, in fact, that is right. It should be the other way around there, though. If you're seven, you can play Shetland Coat Pitch or you can play up to Pinto. No, that's not, I'm not saying that right either. Sorry. <laughs> so, we'll go over that in the Q&A and I apologize. Uh, Okay, bases. Again, both teams are required to bring bases to the games. This is uh, uh, doesn't apply at Shetland because you play at T-Ball City and there's already bases there every week. Um, uh, but the you know the home team is the team that sets up the bases for the game. But both teams should bring bases, and if the home team doesn't have bases, then the visiting team should provide the bases. But if neither team has bases, that's a double forfeit. And your umpire will leave. You're allowed to stay in scrimmage, but the, the, the game will be considered a loss for both teams. So please, please bring your bases. Bats, the bat standards haven't changed now for a number of years, and that's good. No one likes it when they change, and they're like, oh, no, no I have to buy all new bats. You should have... Uh, we switched to the USA bat standard uh, quite a number of years ago. 
So that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, these are the sizes. So a USA bat, you can use a BB core bat for the older kids if it's a drop three and a five eighths barrel, but it has to be stamped on the bat. It has to say BB core certified. And this rule is enforced. Umpires will be looking for that um, and not necessarily rummaging through your dugout at the beginning of the game, but as your batter uh, uh approaches the uh the plate the umpire may call them out on that or if a uh he your batter may uh bat and then the other coach may come over and say hey that batter's using an illegal bat and your batter runner will now be called out so make sure you're using the right bats uh and that makes me think too and I, there's no slide for it but uh no metal cleats in sfybl and uh, for some reason last year this was was a froth issue it's mainly and it mainly comes up with the older kids who also play travel and maybe they play travel in a league that does allow spikes uh and i know it's a drag to then have to have two different pairs of shoes but if you're playing an sfybl you have to wear you cannot wear metal cleats um and you will be called out on those as well or not necessarily depending on when you're called on it but uh, the balls. The balls are provided by SFYPL. Uh, game balls are provided, not practice balls. You have to get those yourself. We will hand out the game balls on opening day, uh, February 25th this year. So, And if you wish to purchase additional balls, uh, you can go on the website under the coaches tab and the balls, and, uh, and there's links to that. But don't go today. Wait till tomorrow because right now those links don't work. Pitching, uh, starting in 2018, Pony League and most other leagues adopted the MLB Pitch Smart Guidelines. And those are specifically designed to protect the arms of our young pitchers. And coaches are required to adhere to these guidelines. Um, they're posted online and they're on the rules highlight sheets, which are, um, uh, those are also online, and I always recommend everyone. You, you, well, I, I would recommend everyone print out a copy of the full rules, and I would bring those with me. But certainly, at the very least, bring out and become very familiar with the rule highlight sheets. There's one for each division, and as the name implies, it's the it's the the, the top shelf rules that you really want to be familiar with. Um, this is a an ongoing problem in SFYBL is coaches not knowing the rules, and, and that's uh, not good. It leads to a lot of confusion in games, and confusion often leads to hard feelings, and we really want to avoid that every year, especially this year. So learn the rules. They're not difficult. The basic base rules are, are baseball rules, and then there are just some tweaked for, for younger players. Uh, back to pitching, though, your uh, pitching guidelines talk about how many how many pitches you can pitch in a game, how many pitches you can pitch in a day, and how much rest you have after you've thrown a certain amount of pitches. And as a coach, if you have a player on your team who plays on another team, you are expected to keep track of any pitching done by that player on those other teams because it's not like they don't uh, tire out arms just because they're on another team, right? So uh, if your player pitched yesterday on another team, then they can't pitch for you today on your team. So um, I know when I coached, I was, you really had to, I didn't basically allow you to play play on another team if you're, you're either on my team or you weren't. Uh, and curveballs, we discourage youth pitchers 14 below from throwing curveballs. I know a lot of kids like to start at this age. There is a lot of evidence it's bad for their arm. So you might think like you're getting your kid ahead of the, ahead of the no pun intended, ahead of the curve for being a pitcher. But in fact, you're just starting them at a young age of blowing out their arm and They'll never have, you know, they won't even make it to college because you started 
stretching their arms out too soon. There's plenty of time for kids to pitch. So as I mentioned, after certain days, depending on your age, you have to rest. And the rest is marked by calendar days. And this is often a point of confusion. What is a calendar day, Commissioner Brent? So here's an example. Player 17 pitches on Saturday. And because of their age, that requires two days of rest. So when can they pitch again? Tuesday, because they have to rest on Sunday and Monday. And it's again, rest is calculated by days, not hours. You'll get someone saying, oh, hey, but Johnny pitched Saturday morning and uh, I've got a game Monday night. Well, it, 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 you know, or, or, or some other time and they'll try to make an argument. So so it's been this amount of hours and, it, and that's not how it's done. It's measured by days. Base pass safety for youth players. There's no contact allowed on the bases. Runners must slide or avoid, uh, or you're going to have either interference or, uh, or uh, yeah, I'm blanking on the other. Let's keep it safe out there. Pointing scores and pitch counts. You will be given a link to a Google form. Both teams should report their scores immediately after the games or as soon as they can. Uh, both teams must also report the pitch counts after the games, and you should be keeping track of the pitch, your pitchers and the other team's pitchers. And you need to report those pitches, both uh, the pitch counts for both teams when you do it. Last year, we were using the virtual badge app to uh, upload scores, but a lot of people were having trouble with that. So this year, Last year, you could do it either way, either through the Google form or the virtual badge. Uh, we've decided in the in the off season to just stick with the Google forms. So that's something you'll you'll get a link to that much closer to the beginning of the season. All right, as mentioned earlier, forfeit rules. If you don't have a buy or a, an exception, forfeits means you show up to game time, you either have fewer than eight players or you don't show up at all. Um, and for the first infraction, it's a hundred dollar fine and you will not be you you're, you will not be able to play another game until that fine is paid. so you have to pay it right away or uh, your next game will be canceled. Um, so please don't do that because that also punishes the other teams. Um, and I'd like to stress that even if you only have eight players at game time and it's going to be a forfeit, there's no reason to not still show up. You can, it's a forfeit, but you can at least scrimmage with the other team, either with them lending you players or however you want to do it. But the idea here, folks, is to play baseball, not to worry about where we are in the standings and where our score is. And, oh, no, those – you know, and it happens to every coach or some some family like, oh, sorry, coach, we forgot to tell you. But, you know, we it's grandma's birthday this weekend and now you're short and uh, and it hurts to take that forfeit. But, you know, don't just then decide, well, we're just not going to come because it's a forfeit. Come and play. Um, there's just there's no reason not to play a game, even if that game's a forfeit. If you have another game that you have to forfeit, the second infraction will be another $100 fine, and you will be eliminated from the playoffs. Uh, you, there will be no postseason for you. And again, you have to pay that before your next scheduled game. And if you have a third forfeit, it's immediate expulsion from the league. Your team will be excised from the record. And we will have to jumble the schedule, and it's a real hassle for everyone involved. So please, again, don't do that. Don't have any. There's just, there's just uh, with a, with with a little forethought on your buys and all of that. And and if you have, you know, a decent amount of players, remember there's a minimum of ten. It's a maximum of sixteen. If you find a sweet spot in there, you should always have enough players. Okay, new rules. There are some new rules this year. Uh, regarding pinto walks, 
regarding videos at games and uh, regarding the number of coaches at games. Number one, the Pinto pitch change rule. In the past, uh, the way it works in Pintos, Pinto pitchers, uh, it's a kid pitch. The, the kids get to pitch until they've walked three kids, and then you switch to coach pitch. Uh, the previous rule was three consecutive walks. Now it's just three walks while that kid is out. Uh, and this is an interest, again, of keeping the game going. Uh, Pinto games can be notoriously slow to begin with, though lots of fun. Uh, and this will just help speed them up a little bit. Um, and again, a reminder, and kids are allowed to pitch two innings in Pinto. So even if it, 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 you switch to coach pitch in the, in the kid's first inning, he's, he or she still can pitch in the, in the next inning. New rule, videos. We're not going to New York uh, in SFYBL. We have adopted the standard uh, national high school baseball rule on this, which is the use of videotape or equipment by game officials for the purpose of making calls or rendering, rendering decisions is prohibited. If you come running out to the umpire saying, look, look, no, that, that ball was fair. It wasn't foul. The, the umpire will tell you, I am not allowed to look at that video. Please remove it from my presence. Um, uh, and again, that's the standard high school rule, which we're adopting. Regarding videos sent to the board, uh, you may not send videos to the board if you're going to be complaining about umpire calls uh, or judgments. Um, our umpires aren't perfect, um, but like any umpire, they make their calls. Their call is the call. We're not going to go looking at videos uh, about that. If you want to send a video to the board, if you're complaining about the behavior of other coaches or players on another team or spectators, that we will allow. Um, but be sure the beha your behavior recorded on that video is, is, is pretty stellar as well because we're watching the whole thing. And finally, a uh, limited number of coaches this year. This is an upper division change. And again, we encourage you to sign up as many coaches as you can for your practices. It makes practices go oh so much better when there's many people helping your kids. You can set up lots of stations uh, so kids don't get bored. That's the number one uh, downfall of baseball practices, of youth baseball practices, probably of major league baseball practices as well, but is boredom. You have to keep these kids busy, right? Kids get bored really quickly. So uh, if there's just two of you out there and they're standing in a long line while you're hitting fly balls, they're going to get bored. Um, so load up on coaches. We, we encourage it, but uh, some teams have had a problem. There's just too many coaches at the game. Um, it's difficult for the umpires. It makes it crowded on the field. It's difficult for the other team. I'm like, who, who is who all is coaching over there? We are now limited to four coaches at upper division games. Upper division again. That's Mustang, Bronco, and Pony. Uh, and four, uh, I think, is generous. I mean, you've got your two co coaches in the boxes, and and one in the dugout, and maybe two in the dugout, or or one somewhere off observing. Uh, but only for the game. Concussion protocol. Concussions are a real thing. Uh, as our coaches get younger, this seems to be uh, an easier message to get across. But some of our old timers, oh, you know, oh, I just got beaned in the head. Uh, it's a serious thing. It's not just a beaning in the head. So be informed. We require every coach every year to take the concussion protocol online training. Uh, there's no exceptions. Uh, if you, we, we monitor that, uh, you have to turn it into us. And if you don't turn it in, you won't get your coach's badge. And if you don't have your coach's badge, uh, you're not allowed to coach. Um, plain and simple. Abuse awareness protocol. We started this a few years ago. This is also serious stuff. 
And as a coach, you are legally considered a mandatory reporter, which if you uh, feel you uh, have witnessed or sense that there is any kind of child abuse going on, you are required by law to report that. So again, be informed. When do I have to know that? All of that. You want to know when it is. And you learn that by taking the abuse awareness protocol training. And again, everyone takes that every year. No exceptions. Every coach has to have proof of your COVID-19 vaccination. New coaches will be required to present that when they go get their fingerprinting. So it's not necessary to send it into the league. Uh, returning coaches, um, you can send in your proof of vaccination. Uh, you can either upload it uh, on your uh, league app profile, uh, which is also, I should have mentioned, where you will upload the abuse awareness certificate and uh, concussion protocol certificate. And there's instructions on how to do that online. Um, and you can, like I say, you can also upload your uh, a picture of your of your vaccination card. Or you can email a picture of it to imvaxed at sfybl.com. Uh, COVID-19, here are our recommendations. The same as last year. Uh, um, sanitize your hands often. Avoid sharing equipment. Uh, no group post-game snacks. Uh, teams and players still should leave the field right after the game. Uh, uh, if you do have any COVID cases on your team, please report them to the league. And uh, But per local guidelines, masks are optional. We know baseball's played outside. Um, it's it's not full. It's not foolproof. But uh, and anyone who wants to wear a mask is certainly encouraged to and welcome to. And no one should be teased for wearing masks or not wearing masks. It is everyone's call. Rainouts. We like to stress every year that it's the San Francisco Rec and Parks Department. They are the people who close the fields, not SFYBL. Um, so when your game gets rained out and you're mad, don't be mad at us. Don't shouldn't be mad at anybody, but if you're gonna be mad at somebody, you get mad at Rick. Um we are always the default position is game on. Unless you hear otherwise, unless you get a message from the league, assume your game is on. You look out the window and it's sprinkling or it's raining, whatever it is. It may not be raining at the field you go to, right? Um, or it's not raining and by the time you get to that field, it may be closed. But that's just part of baseball, folks. You got to go to the field and it might be closed by the time you got there, even if it wasn't when you left. Um, and, you know, the message may come while you're in transit, but you can never assume, just you should always assume it's open. Um, but if it's closed, you may think it's dry enough to play baseball, but the groundskeepers or the umpire may disagree, right? So the groundskeeper, they can close the fields or an umpire may show up to your game and say, uh, that, that spot over there, that's, uh, people are going to slip and fall or, or whatever, or it's too muddy or whatever it may be. There's a big puddle out at second base. Please, 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 please be flexible. We all want to play baseball, but sometimes we can't uh, because of the rain. And that's just part of the game and you need to accept it. Um, and it's a 50-50 thing. It's one of those things in life. Uh, you know, when we close a field, uh, or I should say, whenever it rains, half the community is out there saying, I can't believe they're not closing the fields. And the other half is saying, I can't believe they closed the fields just because of a little bit of drizzle, right? You get closed uh, by the park and rec when it's going to damage the field or whatever. So you can check the RPD website for current field status, and we have a link on the SFYBL uh, to 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 um to that to that um to the website to the rpd website uh under games what if it rains there's a link to that so you can go straight to it youth umpires uh this is 
mostly only found in the Mustang division, though if we have enough, it's possible they might show up in Pinto games. Uh, Pinto games, we have an aspirational goal of having umpires at Pinto games, but generally we don't. Generally, the coaches have to umpire those games themselves. Um, but always, always remember, you need to treat our umpires with the respect, always. But these youth umpires are kids, and you need to treat them the same way. Treat them with respect like an umpire, but remember that they're kids. You wouldn't want some parent yelling at your kid out there, that's a terrible call, come on, blah, blah, blah. Uh, again, you shouldn't be yelling that at our adult umpires, but you certainly, certainly, certainly shouldn't be yelling at the kids, and we are watching. Right. We depend on you. You are the coaches. You set the tone for your players. You set the tone for your parents. And if anybody is violating the tone, we're going to be holding you responsible. So you in your parent meetings and with your kids, you need to be spreading that message, spreading that gospel that, you know, all that matters is what the umpire saw. Doesn't matter what you or I saw. The umpire makes the call and they're to be treated with respect. I am, if he's out there right now, going to turn over the mic to Mr. Emmanuel Blackwell. I hope you're there. I'm here. You are there. And please inform us about our fabulous girls baseball program. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so good evening, everyone, um, and happy Thursday. Um, my name is Emmanuel Blackwell. I'm the program coordinator uh, for the San Francisco Recreation and Parks Department, SFYBL section. Um, and I also uh, help with the base box. So just give you a, a quick brief overview and I'm gonna be reading your mail basically, uh, but I'll be quick. The San Francisco Recreation and Parks Department uh, Base Sox All Girls Baseball Program was founded in uh, 2015 by Rochelle Henley, who's also on this call. Uh, and she's gonna be doing, um, um, I think she's gonna be doing a thing with uh, the girls softball. Anyway, um, so with the philosophy of uh, providing um, a safe and secure place for and for the development of female baseball players uh, and coaches. Uh, we're currently the largest public girls baseball program in the United States. Um, since its inception, the, the program has expanded from one team of 12 girls to over 120 girls uh, annually with our clinics, teams, winter and fall workouts and travel teams. So if it, you have any girls out there who are interested, um, and you know, we're not trying to steal players because we have our own, uh, we have a team in the Pony, Bronco, Mustang, and Pinto division this, this last season and this season. We're not stealing girls. We just want to enhance what, they, what they've already gotten. So um, we have free clinics every month. Please check us out on uh, social media. We're on Instagram. We're also on Facebook. Uh, and our website, which is currently under construction. So please don't check our website because it's kind of janky. Um, so... Uh, just hit me up, shoot me an email, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Manny. Um, I wanted to highlight this slide, too, that they are developing uh, not just players, but junior coaches. Um, and that, so that's pretty exciting as well. Uh, and it's a good point what Manny made. The whole goal of Bay Sox and now girls softball is just is to give that choice. Uh, we're still co-ed. There's plenty of co-ed teams. Um, and if girls want to play with boys, they certainly are welcome to, and we want them to. But some girls would prefer uh, an environment to play with, with just other girls. And uh, and so that's what the Bay Sox is for. And uh, though and they will play teams with uh, boys and boys and girls. So that's cool too. And of course, uh, and we'll get to softball when we get to it. Um, and here's the contact uh, from Mr. Blackwell, who we just heard from. Um, and with that too, uh, we will, I will hand it over to, to talk about the girls softball program. Yep. So I'll take over um, that part. Girls Thank softball, you, as uh, Manny mentioned, um, not to take away from the Bay Sox, but um, softball is something that we always wanted to um, 
break into with um, our SFYBL league. And this past summer, we uh, we offered a softball division within our junior Giants program within Reckon Park. And that was um, ran by Rochelle Henley, um, also known as Rocky. And she did a great job with that. And she's also um, holding a bunch of softball clinics that are um, being offered through Reckon Park. Um, so um, if, if you're interested and you want it um, to, and you have some girls that wanted to participate in some, um, in some clinics, those are being offered through our Reckon Park uh, department. And um, these programs are on the website. I believe one's coming up as soon as December. Um, again, what we're hoping to do is to use these, these uh, clinics to uh, use those to feed into our um, up and coming SFYBL softball league that we'll be offering this year. Um, so we're going to have two um, areas um, for the softball. We're going to have one um, which will be um, RPD driven, um, which people that are individuals that wanted to register for a team because they don't have a softball team, they could go in on the Rec and Parks um, site and register for a team. Um, we have uh, either three or actually four locations that we're going to be offering girls softball within the 10U group and the 14U group. Um, and But then also, if you by any chance had a whole team of girls um, that played softball and wanted to enter a team similar to how you would enter a baseball team um, into SFYBL, you would have that option to do that independently as well. So you would have two options. One, if you have um, an individual that wants to register, can go on to a Rec and Park um, a team and uh, register to, through the Rec and Park website. Or if you have a whole team, you can independently register one through the SFYBL uh, website, which um, Brett will be demonstrating um, how to do that in a second. Um, the 10 U group, just real quickly, uh, will house um, girls anywhere from eight years old, being the youngest to 10 years old. And the 14 U group will house um, girls that are um, of the age of 11 years old up to 14 years old, um, 11 being the youngest and 14 being the oldest. Um, and the uh, age uh, cutoffs and um, dates will run the same as the um, the uh, the baseball um, side. So um, again, real quick uh, overview of the softball. Again, very excited to um, launch that this year um, with the help of Rochelle Henley um, that will be doing these clinics to help feed um, girls into this program. Um, so ho hopefully we have some participants out there um, that will be willing to um, help us get that off the ground. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, let's stick with Gerald Reeder, who will now talk about the SFYBL All-Stars program for 2023. Cool. Uh, real quick, SFYBL All-Stars went great for us last year. We had a 10U team that uh, did really well. Um, got um, one game away from going to the West Zone um, uh, West Zone uh, division, which would take them into LA. Um, but they uh, ran into a really tough, I believe, series Modesto team um, that kind of eliminated them from the, uh, the the possibility of going to the next level. But to, for a team to go that far into an All Star season is a really uh, a really big, um, a really big feat. So that without uh, congratulations to them and what they've done and did this year. Um, also, we had a 13, 14 combined uh, group that did very well as well. And I, um, the, and again, to, for those that don't know how all star stars work, you, you basically play in different levels of, of all stars where you play in um, one group, which it would be a regional and a sectional. And then each time you win one of these tournaments, you go to the next level. And they got, I, I believe, either two or three um, levels deep, which is really well um, or really good for um, any team from San Francisco to do. So that was done um, within the 10 year group and then also the 13, 14 um, year old group. So, um, again, congratulations to them. Um, and, and all that they did this year. And with that said, we're excited to um, do it again. Um, so we're going to, we're hoping to do more teams this year. We, last year, we were only able to do three teams, but this year we're hoping to do um, 
do teams in each age group. Um, last year we did 10s, 12s, 13s, 14s. And let me just mention 12s had a very good team as well um, that fared uh, fared well um, in the tournaments and learned a lot. Um, but again, we're, we're looking to do teams in each age group. And the tryout dates for those for those all-stars will be May 8th um, through the 12th and are usually held at Silver Terrace. So keep an eye out for information on that. Again, it's a way for um, players that want to um, further their careers um, and go and play outside of spring um, to do that. Um, um, but again, they would have to try out and, and make the team. So again, that's information on that. If you're more, if you need more information or you're interested in finding out more about it, all-stars at sfybl.com is where you can email. Uh, thank you for that, Brent. Okay, thanks, Joe. And also, and we always encourage all the coaches, keep your eyes open during the season. And if you see a great player out there, let us know. Because if they don't try out, we might just go hunt them down. Uh, and now Melissa will tell us about our social media. We became much more engaged with social media last year, thanks to her efforts. And we hope to continue it uh, this year. If you have any. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can see on the slide there where you can find us on Instagram and Facebook right now. And yeah, we're trying to um, get it more exciting for the community. And really the point of social media is to tell um, your stories. So we would really appreciate it if you would come over and follow us and um, and also just be looking for opportunities to to do some fun things throughout the season, some features um, we'd love to feature teams and um, games and things like that. So just be looking for those opportunities and send us your content when um, when we ask for it. Which is all the time. Which is all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, your pictures and stories and stuff. It's great. It's really fun. And the kids love it. I mentioned this earlier. Uh, virtual badge this year. We will... 90% uh, chance we'll be using that for your coach's card again. It worked very well for that. Um, but for reporting scores, it was a, it was, some people loved it. Some people didn't. So we're just going to go back to the Google form. Okay. Now I am going to try to do this. It's not going to be with your reader. Hold on. Let me. So, so as you're setting that up, um, yeah. just to break up the monotony, get that ready yeah, to please. go. Um, Brent's going to um, run us through a actual registration process. So a lot of questions out there about, oh, well, how do I register this new program that you're talking about? How does it work? He's going to actually show us in real time how that works. Um, but real quick, Nate, if you're here, can we answer some of the questions that may have not okay. been answered in the chat? I'm here. Uh, pretty much everything has been answered. Um, I think that Melissa was keeping track. Um, okay. Yeah. Got it. It sounds like you're out at the construction zo zone, so we don't want to uh, bother you there. Uh, Melissa, do you, do you have any questions that we might have missed? Um, I, I think everything got answered, but just to maybe um, give the, the, the general thing was there were a lot of questions in the beginning about fingerprinting and, and that process. And I think everything got answered there only if you're in contact with um, players on the field. And if you've already been through the process, you don't need to do it again. Um, there was one question of, that I think I wanted to highlight about six, uh, what is the max number of players? Mm -hmm. And um, it was answered, but I just want to kind of go ahead and add to that one. Um, 16 is the max. If you want to go over the max, you need to have that approved by the commissioner. So you need to be in contact with the commissioner um, if, if that is necessary. Um, other than that, I think everything got answered, uh, except for maybe this most recent one. Um, uh, I think we're about to go through some of these that just came up. So Okay, cool. So, so what we'll do is yeah. um, let, let's go through um, Brent's um, walkthrough of the registration. And then if anyone has further questions, um, we can stay um, on at the end and just actually, actually answer them in real time um, it, it, instead of having to type it in the chat. So um, Brett, without further ado. Um, okay. And are you seeing, first of all, are you seeing the, the website? 
Yes. Okay. Yes, we are. Um, so this is the new website, um, which, and so you might want to write this down. And I'm sorry it wasn't. I mean, the, some of the stuff we've been literally working on all day today. Did, to did you do this. the um, uh, the QR code by any chance that you could fly? I out? did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, shoot. Uh, hold on. Uh, okay. Let's go back. Everyone, get your cameras ready. If you want um, to take a picture of your screen, if it works. Um, it looks like someone um, posted it in the chat as well. If you wanted to copy and paste that. Can you see that? Nope. Nope. Sorry. Hold on. Okay. There it goes. You want to take a picture of that QR code? Yeah, that's both the URL and the QR code. Um, and then, yeah. So, then so, so we'll give it um, five more seconds okay. um, and then show us where that would take us. Yep. Okay. And then, oh. No, that's all right. I have a lot of windows open. And now I have to find the right one to share. God darn it. There you go. Yeah, but it's not, uh, hold on. I'll get there. So you're seeing all this? Yes. Okay. Um, but I want to. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to do it in a private window, incognito, as they say, Gerald. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So you're seeing this? Yes. All right, this is where that link will take you, folks. This is the new website, and we can show, you know, some of that. And so uh, just to make clear on that, until www.sfybl.com is pointing there, you can find the website at sfybl.leagueapps.com, just the front end of this, so just so you know. So you know. So now, but so if you click on that link, it'll send you here and you go down and you, and here are all the divisions, right? Shetland T-Ball, Shetland Coach Pitch, Pinto, Mustang, Bronco, Pony, and the softball teams. And let's just say, since I'm the Mustang commissioner, I want to register a Mustang team. And now at this point, I don't have an account or anything at League App, but, but I'm here and I can hit register and I'm going to. I only have this one choice, so it's super easy because I am the I am the team organizer, right? I'm either the team manager, the head coach. I am the person that is creating this team. I click on that, and so now you're going to want to create an account. So, um, can I can I interrupt Brett, for a second? Yeah, yeah. Brett, we can't see what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, we can't we can't oh. see what you're doing. Yeah, I'm not sure. You you are sharing, but we we you lost this on you clicking the registration and then being brought to a different page. I oh, think you're sharing you're sharing the wrong screen. I'm sharing the wrong screen then. Yeah, hold on. It's not moving as you go. There it is. There it is. Okay. Well, now I want to go backwards. Oop! I went backwards too far. Okay. So. You all saw this at least, right? We're seeing the login um, screen for the account to put in your name, last name, email, and password. Oh, you're still sitting, gosh darn it. Sorry for the technical difficulty. No worries, uh, as, you're, as you're doing that, I'm just gonna quite, kind of quickly describe what you're seeing. If you took a picture of the QR code, 
um, after you, you click on the QR code, you will see the option of choosing um, the different divisions, the two ball, the T ball, the coach pitch, um, the either the Pinto, so on and so forth. Um, you would just click register next to the division that you would like to register for. And then it'll take you step by step um, on the information you would have to enter into um, to register. So you're seeing, uh, so I think what's happening is every time I click on something, it's opening a new window and then that's not the window being shared perhaps. I'm, do you see SFYBL 23 Mustang? No, no. Right now we're seeing create league apps um, account. So it's the actual initial um, putting in your name, last name and so on and so forth. How, how about trying to click that link that you just had up where the QR code was? and see if that would bring us to the next page. Well, damn it. I'm just not, um, when I hit share, I'm clicking on that screen you're describing. This one, sure. But then that's not what I'm seeing. So. All right. Share your entire screen, not just the one tab. Okay. That sounds like good advice. Okay. You seeing it now, Gerald? I'm seeing your first name, last name, okay. email, and password. Are you seeing me fill this in? Yes, yes. Okay, there we go. We don't know how you got there, though. It's that link. That, it was that, that link. link. You, you showed it for like two seconds. Can you, can you put that back up so we can take a picture? It's in the it? chat. It's in the chat. Okay, all right. Yep. All right, so it's going to take you to this page. Uh -huh. Super easy. Put in your address, nickname. I am not a robot. I think it's counting those. Mr. Box. All right. Now, following what I said earlier, Orcas. Dot, oops. Dash. Wellen. Dash. GPS two because I'm I'm just putting that two on there because I've created other teams with that name. Um. Oh, but you know what? Gosh darn it. This is, um, so I'm doing, I, I didn't think I did, but I picked a Shetland team. If, if you pick Pinto and above, the next thing you would have to do is pick that platinum, gold, silver, bronze that I discussed. It would be right here. It's just not here because Shetland doesn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. So apologies on that. Just real quick, as you're typing the, in the phone number, if you want more of a definition description on what the gold, um, the silver, the platinum divisions are, you can find that information on the website. Um, it's it will right here. Put, yep. Under level of play. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so if okay. you wanted to know more about that, you could you could go there and just read up on what the different divisions are. Subdivisions. Yeah. If you already have your abuse certificate or concussion protocol or your COVID vaccination, you can upload those right now or you can do it later, but you have an opportunity to do it right now. 
And next. Oh, Jesus Christ. Come on, don't be so picky. Then you have to sign the waiver. And that's it. Now you're saving your team. And if you have more than one team, you I could have picked uh, to set up another team. And that's rare for most coaches, but there are if some of you out there, do you have multiple teams? Or if you're setting up like five school teams, you can do it all in one sitting. Um, there's an opportunity here to give a donation to the league. Uh, or you can continue on and hit complete. Or again, you can add another team at this point. And there's that. Now, right now, I can, right here, I can start inviting players immediately. Um, or if I go to my dashboard later, you know, maybe now I want to just go to bed. I've, I've, I've muscled my way through this process. But now I have a team and I have my login. And so now I just, you know, moving forward, you're just going to go to the website and, you know, and log in up here. I'm already signed in. You know, it'll say sign in. And, uh, and that will take you here. And underneath your team, it says invite players. I click on that. And I can uh, click in, I can invite me. Uh, I'm not sure if I can, because I might be in the system. You know, please join my team. Um, and you can do multiple emails. Uh, just put them in, you know, I can do that. I can also invite Nate. And then, um, I send that out and then uh, now I go to my email. You can see this is what your, your, are you seeing this, Gerald? Yes, yes. Okay, this is what your families will see. It's like, oh, accept invite. And they can click on that. And then they go through a very similar process. But for them, the boxes on the, well, I guess I can go ahead. So, so real quickly, as you're doing that, um, why this feature is so important is because last year there was the possibility of you giving uh, your players uh, the team name and them going in and accidentally registering for the wrong teams. But because you're sending these invites, there's no way um, that this person could register for the wrong team because they're basically... Um, accepting your invite. So it, it's a cool feature that we're looking forward to um, seeing work in action. Um, so. And so now this is what the, what your the families. Are. Um, yeah. I cool. Think. I think I think we're we're good with that. I think Are that's kind of like yeah, self-explanatory. Uh, yeah, I just want to show that they that it's all you know. Now they're doing a profile. They're going to set up a family account. This now they're this is the player. Mm -hmm. um, it assumes. Um, Uh, whatever, I won't go into that. But that's, you can put their, they can put their email and all that. And then they go through and it's fair. They do a waiver, but see that, but they're, yeah, as Gerald just said, they're on the team. They can't accidentally register the wrong team or anything like that. Well, they're not actually on the team yet. They can accept an invite and then they would have to register and go through the payment process and, and make well, sure yeah. that they, they, they do the confirmation um, but once all that's done, they would be on the right team. There's no, there's no, um, I, I hate to say there's never a way to fail um, because there's always a way to find, find a mistake, but, um, but it's, it's going to be really hard for them to, again, that's that QR code. Um, and this is where you would uh, get the, um, the actual registration page for registering your teams. You could do it as early as tonight and start inviting 
players to register for your team as soon as tonight. Um, we will be monitoring the registrations as they come in. Um, please try to um, restrain from registering more than one team of the same name. I know sometimes that caused some confusions in, in the past where someone feels they made a mistake and they read, they end up registering five different um, teams of the same name. And then that that's going to cause a difficulty um, as far as people registering for the correct um, Reds team or Orca's team. So um, yeah, make sure that when you go in that you just register one team to avoid that confusion. Um, but other than that, I think that is um, pretty, pretty well explained, Brent. Thank you so much for that. Um, let's for the for the sake of time, let's go into answering any further questions that anyone may have. Um, if you do have a question, um, or Melissa, if you can um, provide us with any um, questions that might have not been answered in the chat. Um, okay, so one question was about the specific age determination criteria for softball, if you could repeat that again. Um, so it's the youngest age is eight years old, and that's it goes to 10 years old. So that's eight to 10 for the 10U division. And then it's 11 to 14 for the 14U um, division. So Cheryl, we have if, two, there, yes. Cheryl if, there, if there's enough interest with the youngest girls, Let's say we have, you know, two or three or four or more teams. Is it possible that we would open it up for the youngest kids? Younger than eight years old? Yep. No, unfortunately, we're going to try to keep it at eight to ten because the only um, difference between what we feel baseball and softball at that age is the, the pitching. Um, so and, and girls don't and, and the girls and Pinto for that and, and the other baseball divisions um, they don't start pitching till Pinto and Mustang age um, level anyways. So, so we would encourage any, any girls that are younger than eight to play in our coach pitch or our T-ball divisions um, and then prepare for the um, 8U. We will make the exception like we do in the baseball um, divisions of the one year up. So if you have a seven-year-old that is exceptionally good and can hang and there's no safety issues playing on a eight to 10 year old group. Um, then we'll, we can make a set exceptions based on that. Um, but we want to try to keep it as the youngest being an eight year, uh, eight year old. Got it. Any other um, questions? There is. A, so other than the game balls that are provided, um, teams are responsible for all their own equipment and gear. Um, that was one of the questions. Then there's another question about the coach limited, the, the coach limiting to four. And that does, that applies to coaches on the field at games, correct? That, that's just coaches. On, you can have as many um, coaches registered to a team as you'd like, um, or even background checked uh, or cleared. Um, but you're only going to allow um, a maximum of four coaches on the field. Um, and, the, the, and just some background on that, it was causing um, too much of a confusion with having so many coaches on the field. It was confusing for the other teams and who to address with address with some of these teams having, you know, four, five, six coaches on, on a field. So um, so we, we've decided to limit it to four coaches per per a um, team if there's um, or not a team, but a game. So four coaches at on the field at game time um but if there's for whatever reason if there's special exceptions that need to be made because of something um, or uh, a team needing more attention for whatever reason i'm sure you could talk to your commissioners and they can make that exception if it's a safety issue um but for the for the most part it's going to be um no more than four coaches on the field um at game time any other questions um so there's a few questions. There was a few questions about um, clarifying that it's the entire league is co-ed. So there is girls can play on any of the teams and there's no requirement for the number of girls that have Absolutely. to play. Um, I think that answers yeah, this, a few of the questions. Yeah, there, there, this, this is not a all boys baseball league. And that's why we have softball. This is a it, it's it's open to everybody. Right. Um, then there's a question about, oh, um, is there an opportunity to use the spottery draft process for a second practice day a week? 
Oh, no. Um, you're only given one practice um, per week for, and I believe that's an hour, but you do have the option of renting through permits if you wanted additional field time. Although before Warren, uh, fields are <laughs> limited um, during these um, times of the year being spring um, and baseball season. So, um, but it's not impossible in depending on the field you're looking at. So it, so the answer to the question is you only get one through spot of a spottery, um, but you can request another um, another practice time. But you would have to do that on your own through permits and reservations and pay for that um, out of your own pocket. OK, and then there was a question about videotaping games and um, I, we talked about what you can't do with that. But is it OK to videotape a game without the other team's permission? So the videotaping was addressing the um, the problem with people recording and then thinking that the umpire could overturn a call based on the recording a person had. Um, that's not going to be allowed. Um, what people do with recording off to themselves is their their business. But I I, I could tell you as being a rec and park um, employee um, that there are rules about recording um, on on um, uh, public grounds as far as um, city parks. So um, do, does it always get enforced? Um, I, I, I don't think so, but there are rules about recording um, kids games. Um, so that, but that's beyond, that, that's not why that subject got brought up or why that rule exists. The, way, the reason why the rule exists is because of the overturning of calls or um, judgment calls um, on an umpire's um basis right hope that, hope that um, answers there was the a question yeah i think that's good there there was a question earlier that didn't get answered about the specifications for bases oh waffle wolf, wolf, waffle back bases a little heavier they can't be the throw down bases don't work as well because they get kicked away um so um the the heavier waffle back bases um are good for for games that that's what the standard is. And I think if there's any questions on uh, what type of equipment um, is needed, um, that stuff's on the website as well. You can also use the, um, you know, the puffy bases. You just, basically the only rule is you can't use throw down bases, the little plastic. The thin paper, the, the thin paper ones, yeah. yeah. Um, so. Yeah, it's not so much a rule of what basis can I use. The rule is what basis you can't use. But then that um, waffle back. Sorry, no, yeah, I'm sorry. Go, go for it. That's okay. Um, there was um to clarify one thing. There was a question about rolling over teams, but that is not something we do. So if you even if you were registered last year, it's not still in the team. You'll need to register as a new um, independent yes. team. Yes. And that, that's the case every year. It's like, basically it's, it's a new year. It's a new team. It's a new day. The only, the only thing that <laughs> may carry over next year um, is your um, username and password and you being in the system. But um, other than that, you'll have to re-register next year, a, a team, not yourself. And there was a question about buys. Um, Given that you can't get a buy for both spring break weekends in the upper divisions, should we make a special request for the second weekend to avoid forfeits? You can get as many buys as you want, but every buy that you request, you lose a game. So you're not limited right. to the not amount of the buys you get. Not in the upper division. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I'd have to look at the rule, but I, it was my understanding that is for whatever reason you needed a buy, as long as you let us know ahead of time, those uh, accommodations could be made. It's just that the, when it becomes a problem is when we're in the season and the, the game's about to start the following week and then we get word that you're not going to be able to make it, that's when it becomes a problem. Yeah, but the in the lower division, if you take a, you know, you get 10 games. If you took five buys, you get five games. Yep. In the upper division, you get 10 games. You're also given two buys, one week, night, one Saturday. Anything else would be a special request, which may or may not be granted, but yeah, yeah. You, you could, you could do that. That's what I meant. 
I'm sorry. That's yeah. I, I just I just misspoke with the special request and um, may get accommodated. <laughs> Anything else? Um, for the independent teams, the um, there was a question about how the payment works, and um, I believe that's each player pays when they go in to register. Correct. Correct. Um, Not the they, team paying. Um, that it's usually the individual pays um, the $98 um, to be on the team. Um, there are sometimes exceptions made for school groups, um, athletic directors that are registering a school team. Um, it, it, we make, uh, sometimes we, we can accommodate that. It, it's a little bit more difficult for us to do, but there is a way. And if you wanted to do that, you would just contact me um, Gerald at sfybl.com or gerald.reader at sfgov.org. Um, if you if you had a team that uh, from a school or whatnot that you wanted to register the whole team and then write one check or make one payment for the whole team, that could be done. I think that answers a couple of the other questions that are popping up. Cool. Um, th there was one about somebody was able to register a team but didn't see the invite players link to enter emails to the team uh i'm sorry to say that one more time it says it says i was able to register a team today uh -huh. but i don't see the invite players link to enter emails to the team uh right that, that question came from me um, uh -huh. are you in your dashboard no, what what happened is so so I I'm the AD at St. Philip and I registered uh, I typically every year register a a T-ball coach pitch and a kid pitch. Uh -huh. So the the two Shetland teams I I get the invite player link right those went through fine. It's the Pinto team that doesn't have an invite players link. So I've gone through dashboards, clicked all over. Are you looking at it right now? Uh, Can I, you I look can't, at it right I, now. Yeah. Uh, give me a second. Uh, yeah, let me. I, let me. I get. Do you mind if I share my screen? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, let's I'll see. stop sharing mine, awesome. and then I know where to fix that. If. Yeah. I mean, real quick, you can see it right here, right? So I follow the naming convention, by the way, right? So first grade Bruins, Saint Philip AD, Saint Philip School, right? And then you know this is Shetland coach pitch invite player. Shetland T ball invite player. Um, yeah, just missing, missing here. And uh, yeah, hold on a second. Yep. So I, that's it. That's what I saw. Um, hit refresh. Oh, there it is. Okay. Thank there you. it is. What's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see the problem either. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> thanks, 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 Brent. Thanks for that. Um, Thank you so any, much. any other any other questions? Um, I apologize. Nate might have answered this one. I didn't see it, but somebody asked about if they had a team through RPD last year, should they go? At, should they register as an independent team this year if they all want to play together? Or yeah, try to if, get on if you if you have a coach or, or if you have a coach or a manager that wants to take it upon themselves to do that, by all means they could they could do that, but they have to have one person that's going to um, to take on the responsibility of registering the team and inviting the players. <laughs> okay, and then um, there was a, something about metal cleats, but. We're no metal, no metal cleats. cleats in any of the divisions. Yeah, no Correct. metal cleats. Metal cleats just in the um, pony. Say that again, Nate. Yeah, oh, I see. Just can, in pony can, is they're asking, can they? Allow no, 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 no metal cleats. Um, no metal cleats. Even though pony, if you read the po pony rule book, it states that you could wear metal cleats um, and they allow it during all stars. Um, it's not allowed uh, for safety um, purposes in the SFYBL league. Right. Well, I think it's also a wreck and park thing, right? Yeah. They don't yep. want them on their fields. Yep. Um, any any, any okay. other questions? There was a question about 
um, the buys, I think they're just clarifying the, the Easter weekend buy. That is a buy for everyone because of a big RPD event, not specifically for the parish schools. Um, uh, you know, we haven't as a board discuss it is a there will not be any RPD teams playing at Easter weekend. And we haven't discussed yet whether or not we'll schedule independent games that okay. So I gotta clarify that Easter weekend. There there is no buy for Easter weekend as, as of now. Um the only buy that's going to be um a forced buy is going to be the extravaganza um, weekend. That's it's the weekend that Reckon Park does their um, big um, Easter event. Um, so it has nothing to do with Easter. So right, it, it but might, it is Easter might, weekend. <laughs> it, it might it might just fall on Easter weekend, but it has it has nothing to do with Easter. It, <laughs> it's just the event happens at that time. So if there's any because it's an about, RPD event, yeah, then. RPD staff are tied up at that event and then can't make RPD games. Yeah. And in the past, we've then made it a buy for everybody. And we very well may do that again this year, but we haven't discussed it. We, yep. It's been kicked around in the past. It's like, well, just because the RPD teams can't play that weekend doesn't mean other teams can't. But, you know, but that way with rainouts and all that kind of stuff, it, it's an opportunity for people to get some for the, us to have our schedule breathe a little more and that way Nate has more flexibility with special requests and all that stuff. Yep. It doesn't so, so we'll, we'll talk there. about that. We'll talk about that more um, real quick. There's a question about the, uh, the, the softball growing to a T-ball division in the future. Yes, by all means, this is right now, just we're, we're trying to get this off the ground. We're just trying to try this out, see how it works. So yes, there are, our, our goal is to grow this, division this league um for the girls um so yeah sky's the limit we but we have we have to start somewhere so um we're going to start with the the 10 u and the 14 u um this year uh any other questions real quick again for the sake of time uh, we're going to try to wrap it up so if there are any That's other questions cool uh anything else important that anyone wants to say before we close this out I have a quick question just with the gear yes. for practice. I know it was briefly talked about. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the teams need to provide all the bats, all the, I mean, do you recommend like when an individual player signs up, do you say, bring your own bat, bring your own helmet? Yep. 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 Okay. Yep. Okay. So, and so individual players will need to essentially have all of their equipment so that the team won't have to bring that. For Correct. the most part, it, it, I mean, a coach could take it upon themselves to purchase gear that the whole team can use. I mean, it's not like you need 12 bats per team and each player has to have their own bat. You can share bats and there are things that you can share. And that information is also on the website as far as equipment you can buy um, and deals that we get through Dick's because we are a league with our coupons that we receive. Um, but yes, as an independent team, you are required to um, provide that equipment um, or the the players are required to have their own equipment in order to participate in the, so, in the league. Okay, perfect. So then that means if it's a coach pitch team, the, the level right above the T-ball, do you mm -hmm. have a catcher? Like, would you need all the catcher gear or no? Uh, yep. You, you okay. I mean, it's not absolutely required that you have a catcher in the coach pitch division. Um, but um if if you have someone back there, they have to have gear because they can't be standing there without gear. Because if you get hit in the face by a, a foul ball, um, it doesn't feel good. Okay, but it's not required. This, this is Aaron McClure. I'm the the T ball, and Allison and I are the T ball and the coach pitch. It's really important for the lower divisions to have their own helmets. The lice is a real thing that happens at grade schools, and so you know the idea that one team will share three helmets is not a good one. Cool. Thanks for that. Yeah. Lice is real. Um, so yeah, your own helmets is definitely something that would be rec highly recommended. 
Okay. Uh, and then, sorry, I did at Junior Giants last summer and they give, they give all the gear. So it's, yeah. and now I'm trying to think of like organizing a team for the elementary school that my son goes to. And so I'm like, okay, well that like, they have tons of gear. So, you mm -hmm. know, teas and whatnot. So just mm -hmm. figuring out a way to get that or contact you guys to see what sort of deals you have through Dick's. Yeah. I don't know. yeah. Okay. For sure, for sure. Yeah, Junior Giants is a great program. They provide all that gear. Um, unfortunately, with the SFYBL on the independent side, it's required that the teams provide the gear. Okay. Cool. All right, thank you so much. All right, thank you. And um, again, I'm, we're, we're just going to end it. We're going to leave it there um, and end um, this Q&A. Um, thank you so much for participating. Thank you. Thank you all SFYBL um, board and thank you Brent for preparing this uh, Q&A with the PowerPoint and all that stuff. I know there are a lot of work went into this and uh, we're, we're um, totally appreciative um, to you for that. Um, but next step is going to be getting those teams in and inviting your players and having them register and have enough kids um, and players on those teams prior to December 7th. Um, which is 10 players per team in order to carry on to the next the next stage and then look forward to the coaches um, training where if you have any questions or um, want to uh, learn more about what's accepted and, and, and as far as the rules and so on and so forth, um, look forward to the coaches um, training that will be happening um, sometime end of January. Um, but again, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you next time. Peace out, stay safe. And Thanks, everybody. Recording.